Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to today's webinar on another important subject in our setting. I am Dr. Kasir Philip. I'm a pediatrician at Mulago National Far Hospital, uh, where I also oversee the activities at the Sickle Cell Clinic. Today, we are privileged to have um, Dr. Rebecca Nantanda. Dr. Nantanda is a renowned researcher uh, and a pediatrician. He wa she works with the uh, Mackay Lang Institute. And so she's going to take us through the respiratory complications uh, in sickle cell anemia. So by way of introducing the subject, I just wish to refer you to the slides that are being um, broadcasted across that sickle cell is a genetic disease in which the blood cell become uh, sickle shaped under certain conditions and especially uh, low oxygen tension and all dehydration. It's autosomal recessive uh, in terms of inheritance and the disease manifests phenotypically in homozygous state. So the underlying pathophysiology is that um, normally we have the hemoglobin A, but when you have a gene for sickle cell in heterozygous state, in other words, eutaria, there is a chance of actually transmitting this gene to the offspring. And especially if two carriers need to have babies, there are chances of one in four of the baby, of one in four chances of that pregnancy having a homozygous state or two genes, one from each of the parents. So the abnormal sickle cell, which is called a sickle cell hemoglobin, sickle hemoglobin, results from a single pitch mutation with replacement of glutamic acid by valine in position six of the beta globin chain. And under conditions mentioned up earlier, that is uh, low oxygen tension and dehydration, amongst others, it undergoes polymerization, resulting into distortion of the normal discoid cell of the red blood cell into the sickle cell or sickle type of cell. This renders the sickle, sickle cells very sticky and rigid, and as they go through the narrow corners of the small vasculature, they actually adhere to the, to the walls, vascular walls, and adhere to each other, and thereby cause blockage in these small vasculatures. And as a result, we have ischemic effects, um, distal to the point of uh, vasoclusion, which may manifest as pain initially, but later on we may get um, results of end organ damage or failure. So looking at the epidemiology, it is estimated that 5% of the global population carries the sickle cell gene and thalassemia gene. These are the common hemoglobin disorders. And about 300,000 babies are born with this abnormal um, sickle cell gene in Africa each year, no, globally, and 75% of these are in Sub-Saharan Africa. So as far as Uganda is concerned, Earlier estimates have put uh, figures around 20, 25 percent, 25,000 newborn babies born each year with sickle cell disease, and 50 to 80 percent of these die before the fifth birthday. Of course, the, the statistics, the figures are improving with improved care and nutrition, but uh, these are the earlier stated figures. As a result, it has drawn the attention of the Ministry of Health that has actually set up um, several interventions 
starting with formation of a sickle cell death within the non-communicable diseases department. And over the years, it has carried out several activities. Some of the early activities included um, starting up of a newborn screening program in 2015, which has been rolled out to several facilities across the country, starting with the regional referral hospitals. And then uh, also creating awareness as well as coordinating the, the other stakeholders as a non-government organization that have come in handy in as far as creating awareness among us, the population. The recent or the most remarkable was the 2017-2019 Kabaka birthday run that, whose main theme was focused on increasing awareness of sickle cell. There's still work in progress and we still have a lot of work to do together. But okay. around the same time in 2015, uh, the ministry carried out a national sickle cell surveillance that by and large mapped the disease across the country and showed that we have um, sickle cell across the country, but with a higher prevalence in the mid-north, the areas that are shaded in, uh, in, um, in um, uh, a magenta shade or purple shade or pink shade, uh, followed by the east and central, we have a north, mid-north, actually sub-region. We have the east central, um, stretching from um, around uh, Ginger to Soroti area. The central, followed closely by the central. And lastly, in western Uganda, where we have the least prevalence. So national prevalence stood at about, of the traits stood at about 13.3%, and that of the disease stood at about 0.7%. Uh, of course, these were based on um, a HIV screening program, the early infant uh, screening program, but by and large, they gave an indicator of the national um, distribution of the disease burden. So having said that, and without wasting more time, 